Um, we're going to talk about why we need to renovate the town hall. Obviously, coming in, maybe it was very obvious the ice and snow. Um, we're going to talk about the current conditions, which you can see here, some pictures representing some of the current conditions. And this is Ernie Parish, who came in that door and fell through the floor and then repaired it. Um, then we're going to talk about some of the things that we've already done. So you can see the, the roof that voters approved, uh, the steeple before and after. Um, and then we're going to present the next steps and what we were asking for the voters on town meeting day. And we'll give it to the money. So David Sheets. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to, so, so we've called this phase one, and now we're moving into phase two. And so phase one was a lot of studies, which Scott's going to talk about. Um, but now we're really getting down to bricks and mortar and hammers and nails, making the building usable. And so David's going to talk about why we need to look at phase two as a renovation. So, um, for the past five, six, even years, the Callis Historic Preservation Commission has been working on this project year by year with the help of consultants that um, we have access to federal funding each year uh, through a grant program at the Division for Historic Preservation. And those federal funds come to Callis by virtue of it being uh, a certified local government. And that program has given us access to um, help um, that each year has gotten us to a certain point. And um, most recently, some of you may perhaps remember the year, two years ago, I believe, when we put together a Callus task force uh, on the town hall. And we drew, drew people from throughout the community to help us figure out the dilemma at that point and potential new uses for the hall, as well as the current uses for the hall. And it was through that process that we came up with quite a list um, that we're going to make known through this period all kinds of things. Um, and they also helped us determine, was this in a floodplain? And for the next year, we hired a consultant to help us with that question. And the happy result of that was that we, do, we found out that only this corner of the town hall was actually in a floodplain. And that by resizing the culverts here and here, um, we could avoid floods for the next millennium. Roughly. Um, roughly. And uh, that, once we were over that little problem, we then started talking very practically about this building and its new, new uses. And by that time, the Blue Barn had been, um, <laughs> uh, had come to the end of its useful career as a theater. And, um, Thespians from Maple Corner started um, getting interested in this uh, in this property. Um, Jamie's landscape group suddenly saw opportunities on this parcel of land for uh, new uses. Um, and yet, meanwhile, over in the town office, um, we have a bit of a crisis with a lack of office space in the comparatively new town office. But due to the shifting of office functions over there, we're now concentrating on that literally as an office space. And all of the many meetings that have increasingly been, been taking place at the town office, the, the, long, the, the vision for this building now is that many of those meetings should take place here. And we can devote more of the square footage in the town office to that 
kind of purpose. So little by little, each year, we've come to recognize the value of this building and the need to renovate it and make it useful throughout the year. Because as many of you know, um, when it comes to heat in this building, uh, you're looking at one of the two stoves upstairs and downstairs that have meant that this pretty much has always been a building in recent years that has been used only seasonally. And in many of those years, only for town meeting. And very few other meetings take place here, especially in the dead of winter. So um, with that in mind, uh, we have a team. Uh, the select board um, recently appointed a, a committee. Uh, we are all members of that committee. Um, and there are several other members as well. And um, I'll turn it over to Donna and John McCulloch, who is our architect, for a more complete uh, examination of what, what the proposal is. So next, number two on our list of four is to talk about the building's condition now. And that's Scott and John. All right. <laughs> 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 the photos over there. Yeah. About four years ago, I, I actually was in the building when um, a former select board member came through that door and fell through the floor. It was, and this is a this is a, a photograph of it. And that made us me. I think I'm the only one who's done this. Go in the, the entrance to the crawl space, which is back in there, and do the. Oh, it was awful. It was just there's about this much room in the, in the crawl space. And that I went under there and discovered that the beams supporting this building, particularly in that corner, are just gone. They're, it's like sponges. You could, they're eight, pine eight by eights that were put there. When would you guess, John? Um, when, the, when, the, when the building was built? Yeah, the basement. Yeah. yeah. The, this, this, for years, this has been called the basement, the room we're in now. And we believe that originally the church was just what you see upstairs. And that was sitting on a conventional block foundation for, from the, the 1860s version. Then they decided they needed no more room. So instead of, so they did that by raising the building and creating this space. But when they did that, they didn't take a lot of care about the foundation or the, the, the support beams. And over the years, those particularly because of moisture in that corner. The, the foundation, the eight by eights that hold, the, that hold up the perimeter of the building have basically fallen apart. And that's something that the town really has to address no matter what, no matter what happens. We really need to get that replacement done. So that's really the, the in my mind, the number one reason for doing this big project that we're asking the town to pay help to vote a vote in favor of a of taking out a loan that will allow us to do this repair because it's falling apart over there. Um, what else are we supposed to talk about? I guess that's it. The deterioration, and it's we we. This is a picture of Ernie putting in some props so that you can still walk over there and it's not, not really dangerous anymore. But the fundamental condition of the, of the deteriorated beams continues to exist. And the next part is from is Donna and Scott talking about commitments already made and projects already completed. So we've been working on this. I'm just going ahead. Okay. <laughs> I was going to tell them how much money we've spent already. Right. Well, I'll, I'll tell them okay. how, yeah. we've, how, yeah, we've how it's that. come about. In, in uh, 2011, the select board asked the Historic Preservation Commission <coughs> to guide, help the select board decide what to do about the town hall, because we knew it definitely needed work at that point. Um, and that's when the select board started getting the grants that David referred to that we were, that we were eligible for. 
in 2011, we did the logical fun, first fundamental thing, which was hire an architectural firm and an engineering firm to come in and do a thorough assessment of where we were at in the building, what, what its needs were for preservation. That, was, that report is, um, was published in 2012, and it, we, it's called the Arnold Scangus Report, and it's available on the town website, and there's a copy back in there. And that's the basic document that, that, that the Historic Preservation Commission and the Select Board have worked from in this long, long process of, getting it, of doing the restoration. One of the first recommendations in that report was that we needed a new roof. So in 2013, at the town meeting in 2013, the town voted $25,000 to put on a, to pay for putting on a new roof. Um, things in the construction trades happen slowly, so the roof wasn't actually finished until uh, spring of 2014. Then, then the next grant after the, the assessment grant um, was for repairing, replace, repairing the existing monumental windows upstairs. Those beautiful, beautiful windows. I hope everybody gets a chance to get a look at them. They were, they were in pretty sorry shape, and we were really lucky to get a, somebody who's been trained and experienced in the, that kind of historical restoration. So, the, so then we had the new windows. Um, after that, we realized that, we're gonna, that we were going to need the, the participation of the whole town. And so we hired a consultant <coughs> to, uh, she, she helped us set up a town hall task force. Um, maybe some of the people here were, were on that group certainly heard the, some of the things about the reports of it. Um, that gave us a, an idea um, of the kind of support within the town for restoring the town hall. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big commitment. One of the results of that report were that about 70% of the residents of the town that answered the questionnaire see the town hall as a vital, important resource for the town. And so that and that report made a number of recommendations for next steps. We knew all the we knew all the things that needed to be done, and the report helped us look at them in a, in a put them in an order. One of the first things that the town hall task force recommended was that we address the problem of, of knowing whether or not this building is in a floodplain. Um, FEMA that determines whether or not a building is in the floodplain originally had this building in the floodplain. Then about four years ago, when was their thing, that, the next one that came out, Paul, about that? Yeah. Then they took it out of the floodplain. <laughs> but then any engineer who came and looked here would look at it and say, of course you're in a floodplain. So we hired one of the engineering firms that had a lot to do with restoring Waterbury after the, the big flood there. And they spent considerable time with surveyors Getting, getting a picture of where exactly where the building was vis-a-vis -vis a flood, and then what some of our alternatives were. Um, the, the first, the, the, the alternative they recommended first was that if we could um, replace this culvert, which is now a 12-foot wide culvert, with one that's the actual width of the Pekin Brook, which is 24 feet, that the next time there's a, a big water event, um, the, the water will continue down the, the brook instead of backing up at this culvert and coming around and encompassing the, the whole town hall, which happened. This is the high water mark from the 1984 flood, this, this dowel. Um, in 1984, there was a big thunder, down, downpour thunderstorm. This culvert got blocked up, and the water came up and flooded, flooded the building. So we wanted to be sure that when we invest a bunch of money in a new foundation and essentially repair the building, that it, will, that it won't get flooded again. And that report gave us uh, pretty good confidence that 
um, if we do some of the things Sean will talk about later, that, that we're not in a floodplain. Um, after the, the grant that we applied for after that was the one that we're using this year to help with fundraising and general awareness of the state of the town hall, which is what we're right in the middle of. Sorry, I went a little over what I was going to say. Oh, oh, I think that's where he's going. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, and so the studies are available on the website. There are copies um, back there if you want to look at it while you're here. And then on the kind of purple sheet that I handed out, they're listed under um, phase one. Here's what we've already accomplished. And so the projects that Scott talked about um, came to $98,386. So that's the amount of money since 2013 that's been invested in this building. And 53865 came from grants. And um, the rest of it came from taxpayers. Um, so that includes the roof, which was about $25,000, and about $18,000 of matching funds for the grants and for other um, expenses that went along with those grant projects. Um, so here's how we got to where we are now. Um, we realized, or the Historic Preservation Commission realized that in order to actually do some construction renovation, they needed to hire an architect to do plans so that we could get estimates. And so they sent out an RFP and they got three bids back. And the bids were for $42,000, $65,000, and I think the last one was $68,000. So that's when the Historic Preservation Commission realized the town can't afford to have just an architect and still, be, still not have a building we could use. And so they came up with this idea of exploring locally based ways to move toward restoration, renovation, and actual use of the building and went to the select board for their support. And that's where we are today. Um, and we believe we can save money by uh, taking advantage of local talent, hiring local people, avoiding consultant fees and, and markups, um, using the town office staff, road crew employees and equipment. Um, and so we've done a lot of estimating. Um, I have a list of expenses there which I can hand out. Um, with the support of local contractors, electricians, plumbers who've helped us with pricing estimates. And then town hall committee members have used their personal contacts to get information. Um, but we would not be here today if it wasn't for John McCullough, our architect, who will uh, take uh, over the next. Uh, <laughs> 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 Go for it, John. Take it away. Okay. Um, so when I got involved, um, the reports have been done. The, uh, the architects, uh, Arnold and Skangas, have prepared a report. Just speak up, John. Like Arnold and Skangas report. Um, they made specific recommendations. Uh, one is to re oh, start out with what was recognized is that lift is not compliant. That ADA restroom is not compliant. The the codes have grown up around this building, and and the things that were compliant with that thing so has always been terrifying to use. <laughs> um, so Arnold and Skangas recommended that uh, the repair addition, which has no historic value, um, be reconstructed to accommodate the lift. That would mean reconfiguring the stairs. And if we're going to use this year round, we're looking at, at a, uh, a small mechanical room, something for a boiler, um, circulators and such. Um, so that goes into this new new design rear addition. Um, and uh, so that was that was those are recommendations from Arnold and Skangas. The um, um, Malone McBroom hydrological study, they showed a worst case with a clogged culvert. Um, they said what the base out flood elevation would be for that and the recommendation was was that we lift their recommendation was that we lift the building some incredible three or four feet above that. The state said one foot. The state saw the Malone McBroom report and they said use the high number, the clogged culvert number as, to establish a base flood elevation. And so I'm going to show you a, a plan that has the finished floor, a 
foot above the highest BFB that was established in the, in the report. Um, so those are the uh, recommendations from the two report, those two reports. Uh, the, the third report came from the Callis Town Hall Task Force where they were looking at uses. Uh, Scott's already talked about, or David's already talked about, the need for all our different committees, which increase in, in number. Um, we've got Conservation Committee, Planning Commission, Select Board, uh, Cemetery Commission. I mean, it goes on and on. The, the town hall office is used almost every night for one meeting or another. Um, and at the same time, the, the, what the listers have to do, what the zoning administrator has to do, what the clerk and the assistant and the auditor, that goes on and on. They need that space for their own stuff, so all the meetings have to find a, a place to happen. So the town hall task force said we should use this for town meetings, but also um, community uses, tag sales, uh, uh, wedding receptions, wh whatever, whatever we could use it for. And then, like David said, the theater was looking for a place. So if we develop the upstairs space so it's so flexible as possible, we can have larger town meetings if there's a special ballot item that attracts a big crowd. Um, otherwise, uh, this, this place will be open for business. The downstairs, year round. It'll, it'll be heated and well insulated and used year round. So those are the uh, basic components that I work with. And I'll show you uh, what, what came out of that. Um, I'll do this real quick and then we'll gather around and look at it later. Here's the, uh, here's the building on site as it is. The, the recommendation from uh, Malone McGroom is that we lift the building up a foot. And that's what this is. The building's up a foot. More than that, though, some of the storage requirements here are such that we looked at, at any place we could grab storage. And it occurred to me, us, the town hall group, that if we made the front wall of the building, if we made it a full height concrete wall underneath the existing landing up there and then stepped it to the sides, that we could actually use the space under the landing for storage and also bring the grade up so we don't have the stairs spanning that canyon anymore. And it also lets us do other things with grading, which allows vehicles, if we did have like a wedding reception or something, a vehicle could actually pull up in front without, uh, without driving into a ditch. Um, and, and this model also shows the parking lots raised 12 inches. That gets the, the actual parking lot above the uh, state recommended BFB uh, base flood elevation. <coughs> Everything all works a whole lot better if we get the 22 foot culvert. Right now the the report says that if there is a clog in the culvert, we can expect water to flow down the road to the low spot and flow around both sides of the building. But the building is actually out of, of what should flood. The building should be protected from flood, even in that worst case, according to the report. So that's the site model. Um, for the inside, for the interior space, the theater group what they've asked for, and you can see all this in the, uh, the site plan, and uh, I've got a floor plan and elevations. The other group has already constructed a performance platform. What they, what they still intend to construct is a wall that would be 10 feet high off this floor that would go around, and it would be sort of a backstage area that they could access the stage. So they're thinking of it in, in terms of uh, uh, theatrical productions. At this end, at the, at the end of the toward the road. This model, it's probably hard to see in the model, it's not represented accurately, but the, the, the box pews will be taken out and, and it'll be one open space. There'll be chairs, they won't be folding chairs, they'll be stacking chairs, so they'll have cushion seats and backs, and they stack onto little platforms with wheels, and those in turn can be parked in these storage places, so that if, they had a, if there was a dance, or an art exhibit with art on uh, folding partitions or even whatever. The space can be wide open for a contra dance or for a theatrical production, the chairs distributed around the building. 
the above these, these are no higher than they have to be to get under there, 80 inches roughly to the ceiling of the inside. Up above, what the theater people want is a place to access by a metal ladder to get up here to run lights to shine on the stage. So we've got these two perches, and that, uh, that's pretty much the upstairs space. It's for, for any kind of meeting. Um, the downstairs space is reconfigured so that now we've got a, a code compliant bathroom to be built on the back wall, sort of right where that, that wooden cabinet is. Um, in that corner would be a non ADA compliant bathroom. The kitchen would be reconfigured so there'd still be room to work to heat food and such. And the serving is still here, it's just as long as it is now. Um, but nobody prepares meals, so we don't, we don't need as much kitchen space as we're not using well right now. Um, and then the rest of the space, I didn't, didn't have them modeled in the stairs yet, but this is the stairway. Um, it, you go up from the, from the lower level, you go up, circle around up. Here's the lift. Here's the mechanical room. This is storage. We've got file cabinet, a specific recommendation for fireproof file cabinets for the Vermont for the Callis Historic Society. Plus, in, on the drawing, you'll see on this wall there'll be there'll be shelves and built-ins for for a display of some of their stuff and also um, cabinets to hold some of their other historical things. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, everything. Else, if you have any questions, come up and look and come stare at the model. It's uh, pretty clear. But those are the uh, those are the components in the whole building. Um, the downstairs will be wired in such a way that if we end up having to put permanent, let's say the listers, for example, had to set a permanent residency here and did all the work here, the wiring would allow us to put in. Uh, temporary partitions or something, so uh, that would probably mean floor outlets and, uh, but thank goodness if a Wi-Fi we don't think about running a cat file all over the place or something. Um, that's all I have. Any questions? So let me guess, you all want to know the cost. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all leading up, Judy's going to pass out our estimated cost and income projections. But this is all leading up to asking the voters at town meeting for a loan for $200,000 that would be paid back over five years. So each year would be about $47,000 principal and interest. And we can go over the sheet, Judy's. So this is phase, these numbers are phase one. Phase two, so that does not include like painting the outside of the building. Um, what else is included in phase one again? Oh, insulating up the level is in here. Um, Where is phase one listed? Well, phase one is like, phase one is what we're going to So you're going to need phase two. Yeah, so this is phase, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, this is really So, phase so. What is not included in phase two is like painting the outside of the building, sanding the floors, um, painting the inside. Um, so our estimated cost at this point is $340,824. And then if you look down the income, you'll see what we expect to get um, the income from that. So you see there's some grants. Um, and then we already have $65,000 on hand. If you remember, usually at town meeting, we ask for money to go into the reserve fund, so we have that money. Uh, Blue Barn Players have done a couple of concerts here, and we have uh, proceeds from that. Um, and then down at the bottom, I've listed how we plan to use the town road crew and equipment. Questions for any of us? And then if you want to come up and talk specifically with John about I think in terms of the construction, if I could just simplify this, um, this summer uh, we would be lifting the building up, putting in a new foundation, moving the building aside during that process, and in moving the building, this downstairs area basically gets kind of plundered. And so moving it back onto the foundation 
then the reconstruction of the interior of this space would commence and be finished sometime in the fall. Um, we can is that correct? Yeah. Is that all new construction then on this level? It's so this, is, this is demolished. The, this here. is the finishes are demolished. The the timbers and you know structure is retained. Okay. But the 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 most of this is um, is got right. The uh, the walls are stripped of everything. Uh, the insulation can be applied. The ceiling as well, because we're going to get a, a thermal envelope between here and the upstairs space. Right now, there's no plan to heat or insulate the upstairs, but use this as a place that can be available all winter long. Um, a note, uh, I hadn't really rehearsed this presentation, but construction is going to be a slab. A slab inside a frost wall, a slab will be well insulated and it will be a radiant slab. So that's the intended heating system for this. Mm -hmm. That's one reason we only had to lift the building up as high as we, as we are, because we don't have a crawl space to worry about flooding out anymore. Denise, do you want to say something on behalf of the select board? Yeah, I mean, the select board's been following this for, for years, and there's been a ton and ton and ton of volunteer time and effort and involvement. And the select board, you know, originally we had a lot of the same questions um, that you folks will probably have. But in the end, the select board strongly supports this proposal. And we put it on the morning, so we hope you'll spread the word that this is a really reasonable price for this project. Um, you know, with all of the idea of hoping to employ local folks as much as possible while following the rules for reg and regulations for RFPs, this is a really good example of a project that can be done with all of the talent that we already have surrounding us. <laughs> so we hope you'll spread the word and vote in favor of the loan. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just wonder, will you be able to, or is our plan um, to salvage and reuse things like the floor and oh, the yes. oh, yeah. colors yeah. yes. and the cohooks, like the things that are charming? The, the and windows, <laughs> the columns, the floor, all the door. remain. Door. The doors, there are a couple of historic doors, all remain. Um, yeah. The, as you can see, you know, there is already sheetrock pretty much on many of the walls and even the ceiling. My hope would be that these columns will not look quite so uh, submerged in sheetrock as they currently look. So actually, the goal would be for this to look more historic than it actually does currently. And, and yes. I also want to say that um, eventually we want to be able to rent this building. And there are many different models for renting a building. I believe in Plainfield, they have someone that rents their town hall. And I think that person gets a percentage of, of the rental fee, so you know she's encouraged to, to rent it. Um, Preservation Trust of Vermont also has different models that they will share with us. You mean her income is part for percentage income. of it, yeah. so that promotes her and her right. her yeah. The idea is to use this. Building as much as possible. Right. And, and I think for, and yeah, for the community, especially. Right. right. For the community, for, I mean, there's a real desperate need for meeting space. The town office, you know, just needs to be used for the staffing. And I know even during the day, the town office gets used for meetings all the time, and it's, it's quite busy. And I think Maple Corner Community Center is a really good example. I mean, we tried to schedule a meeting there for this presentation, and I had a really hard time finding a night. And it used to be, you know, it was never used in the winter. Um, but we're doing this with your taxpayer money, and nobody has taken clothes off. Unless you want to. <laughs> I, with many of us, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, sort of four, if I can remember them all, related questions. Um, <laughs> where are we on paying off the town? office. What do we pay off that office? Have we paid off the Oh, no, we haven't. And, uh, no, we haven't. And if I had a town report here, I could tell you what we're going to pay off. Well, related to it, what other, what other debt 
do we have? Not not on high. Forget the highway stuff. So. Yeah, it, um, all the loans are in the town report. Which oh. I mean, this, this is all, but I can probably. Does that work? Yeah, I think I have eight more years on the town. I can remember the third one. I'm having trouble with the fourth one now. You talking about the fire department building? No, that's <coughs> No, I won't go there. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what a little, little town. Uh, we have a fire department bond. Right. Town office yeah, bond. Sure. Um, we've got a couple of trucks. Yeah, I don't this, care is, about this is this is like yeah. As far as it, yes, it's, it's a fire so, station. So we don't have a whole lot of it. No, right, this should have a um, fire station and the town uh, office. The and town so office is done in 2024. Fire station 2030. Six more years. Um. I guess that related, is this sort of eligible for these for municipal bond borrowing, or do we have to go? We look, we look at that, and it, it, we'd be paying more money over the long run. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And see, this way, that you're committed to, is it 10 years? Ten, it's you 10 can't, years. You can't pay it off you, early. Right, you can't pay it off oh, early, right. which doesn't make any sense. And then the fourth one was, I don't see VHCB on here. Have they been approached and not given you? Or? They're involved in other things in town. <laughs> I mean, they could be. I yeah. mean, they're not. Our, our plan, uh, once the 200000 is acquired for the loan, right. is to augment that with every possible grant we can get. Um, we're restricted on an annual basis to state grants. So our plan currently is to go after an historic preservation grant this year. That deadline is in the fall. So we would uh, do that probably to take the expense of rehabbing the windows downstairs. We've already done the windows upstairs, but we have not done the historic windows downstairs. So that's, uh, that's our plan. For that, um, we're, the big one is that we're applying for a community block grant from the state mm -hmm. to take care of all the ADA. So the addition, uh, the lift, the handicap accessible restrooms, all of that gets funded by that community block grant. We have Lisa Ryan back again as a consultant. The CLG grant is paying for her. Uh, to help us with that grant. She used to administer that program and she knows the ins and outs of that program so she's going to be helping us get that grant in uh, in September. So that's a September deadline. So, uh, his, you know, the following year um, for phase three, um, I expect we'll go for a cultural facilities grant uh, that'll help with improvements to the upstairs to make it even a better cultural facility because that's what that program You're funds. You're talking about phase three. Phase three. So that would be the next phase. That's not what we're asking for this year. But I think we go after every grant we can possibly get. Foundations as well. We're, we're currently studying all of those options for, for pieces of it. And yeah, HC BACB was uh, been years since I worked there. But, right, but it was there was a certain gee, should we be helping towns do what they ought to do anyway? Sure, that question always applied to this kind of stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I think our enough. part of our dilemma, as you can recognize, is this town is wealthy with historic assets. I'm going to put it that way. Yes. <laughs> and um, we have the Old West Church. We have, you know, I don't need to enumerate all of them, but happily, Memorial Hall is being helped substantially by them oh, okay. currently. So it's a question of how many landmarks get helped by the same, Just all the of the same people. We're and, our fingers. Right. Indeed. Jane, so, Jane, anyway. Jane's had a hand up a lot. Sure. Jane. I have two questions. John, if I'm imagining at a town meeting, people look $200,000. Wow, that's a lot. Can you break that down, how much it would cost each homeowner, say, per $100,000 of property? Value? I think it's about $43. If your property is worth $200,000, you'd be paying $43. Well, if you had that information, that would help a lot. Yeah. Because people are always, what's this going to yeah. cost? Oh, you? yes. And the other thing I'm wondering if you could come up with a figure 
a rough figure of how much of this expense is being poured back into the community by hiring locally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, some of that is sort of on here. Yeah, but just a general barnyard figure of, of this isn't money that's going out the door to somewhere right. else. Well, I, well, it's I going back to the yeah. Um, yeah, I think we have that. Yeah, yeah anyhow. I that's mean, that's, that's, those are two yeah. great yeah. points. Yeah, yeah, those are two really great points. I think we're, I think one of the reasons we're so excited about this project is exactly what you're saying, which is not only have we gotten this pared down to an amazing price tag, in my humble opinion, but um, but we're using local yeah. resources to get this done. Even the town's employees are all going to pitch in and do the excavation. And yeah. you know, it's pretty amazing. I don't know a lot of towns that are going about it in quite the same way. Um, it's what it's what Scott has dubbed the hyper local approach. And that's how we're billing this. We're, it's a, that's what brought the price tag from Arnold and Skangus's estimates way down. Uh, yeah. And that's one question I had. Uh, I, I understand that. I'm in favor of that. But that doesn't mean it's free. If the town oh. crew is here working on this project, they're not. Yeah. They're not working on the roads. And, and sure. yeah, what's not getting done? They're already maxed out. <coughs> Maybe less so in the summer, but we you can't all just say, oh, that's not going to cost right, us anything. Right. That's not true. And the other thing I wanted to ask you about is on the summary of the expenses on this, uh, whatever color this is, sheet, beige, um, peach. peach, salmon. I have not seen The summary of, of expenses, income and expenses, there's a 38 thousand eight hundred eighty dollar number there so why are you asking for two hundred thousand if it's almost forty thousand dollars <coughs> over what's needed I'm not saying it won't be needed but that's not justified on this sheet. Well, if anybody wants to come to the office I have like all the bids from all from the contractors here I'm but just wondering so why 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 do you need to ask for two hundred thousand if you're showing a surplus of thirty eight 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 well, well we, when we're in the mode, include, yeah, uh, is, just let me, uh, when you're in the mode of a project, this is nothing but an estimate. I, I and if we don't have it, cost more, uh, it will end up costing a loss a lot more if we end up short during the project. Well, then so, explain that. If that number is so, just there. Can you sure. say that number is there? I'm going to explain it. Can I explain it? Yeah. Okay, so usually, in fact, I've kept every sheet of uh, <coughs> expenses as we've gone along the last two or three months. There's a 10% contingency. That 10% contingency, I did not put in expenses. So if you add 10%. That's the 10%. Yeah. I'm, just saying, 10%. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We should probably show that. We should probably put that on. Because there's no agree, explanation for that number yeah. Yeah. hanging yeah. out. I agree. Yeah. So Good the point. contingency should be added in. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Read. I'm not sure this would be ready to put into the budget, but I, I think we can assume that there will be some contributions uh, from from ongoing users of the building, such as the Callis Historical Society. Um, that can be put on the income side. Yes, I mean, we have currently a line item that includes right. donations. So, so this is my income sheet, and I have a firm column, and then I have a to-be-determined column. Mm -hmm. And in that to-be-determined column, uh, there are some organizations in town that are going to ask for money. There are some people in town that are going to ask for some money. Um, donations? But we don't want to make promises we can't keep. So that's why it's in like to be determined. We're being conservative right yes. now about fundraising uh, beyond grants um, as a category. And one of the reasons we're being conservative are, again, the number of landmarks in this community who are also going out to the same donor base to raise money for the steeple at the Old West Church, um, Memorial Hall, the sawmill, Kent Museum, you know, there are too many. And we're trying purposely, if you must know, not to be competing. 
with other projects in town that have no other alternative but to do that. With a municipally owned facility like this, it is uh, for all of Calus to pay for this and not an option the way that other landmarks in town um, operate. That's kind of the philosophy that I would use. And I just want to point out that, okay, so the town office, I think, I think we moved in there in 2006. That was designed when we had one person in the office. Right. With no assistant, nothing. Now we've got three listers. We've got a treasurer, a clerk, part-time assistant clerk, um, Jonathan Williams, who's the select board um, administrator. Uh, we've got people in there using the, the conference table uh, throughout the day. Uh, we have to link with tax collector. Who am I missing? So so the administration. Right. Yeah. That all these people, I, I've seen in my experience with Lister for the last, whatever, it's almost six years, that every year the state says, oh, we want you to do this little thing for us, this little thing. And, and so the, the work that, that's being dumped on the town is the mm -hmm. best word for it. I mean, it's really happening. Mm -hmm. The state it's wants the certain shift. things, and they say, oh, the town will take care of it. It's just one little thing. And every year it's one, it's one little thing. Um, I'll just testify that I know there's a, a movement of an open office, you know, concept. We've taken that to the extreme, <laughs> where you can't even think straight because there's the phones ringing, there's people coming in for dog tags, there's lawyers researching, lawyers are wishing they could use our computers because we don't have a public computer, the listers are having an argument about how to appraise a particular property. It's very, very hectic. Um, so that, that and, and the expectations for listers expand, the same for treasurers, clerks, auditors, everybody else. The workload just keeps expanding. So I really do see that building as primarily needing to be an office building in the future. Well, and currently when it's used for meeting space, quite often it's over technically what the allowable amount of people is supposed to be in that building. So that's a, that's a problem. Michael. Um, what happens to those box cues that get taken out? We're not. We're not sure. We're. Not sure yet. We know they did not come from this building. Yeah, they're valuable. So, I mean, they are. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, most certainly. Most certainly. But that's the the nice thing about the box views is that they are not original to this building. Therefore, uh, the seating upstairs will be a lot more flexible. The the benches we believe are the benches are actually original to the building. We're pretty sure. So all of the benches will be retained, um, but you can get them out of the way when there's a contra dance upstairs, and uh, the benches will be augmented with stacking chairs. So we intend to auction those off. Um, regrettably. The stoves can no longer be used with the vision that you see before us, so the stoves may get auctioned off. Um, this, hopefully, those things can be sold to the advantage of the project. And if we pressure the representatives to get rid of the whole silly property tax system and replace it with an income tax, we won't need the damn listers. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That's their Whoa! <laughs> I was a listener once, so I can say that. <laughs> yes, Greg. Are those stackable chairs going to be plastic and, and modern in appearance? No. That would, that would be really disappointing. Yeah. Correct. I totally agree. I don't think we've selected a model, but my hope would be that they would be quite comfortable and yet stately looking. <laughs> I have a preference. <laughs> Probably not red yeah. velvet. I'm not sure that's callous, but uh, anyway. Just the construction detail. John mentioned a radiant slab here, and then somebody mentioned saving this pine or spruce, whatever it is, and using that for the floor. Which is it? Both. Oh. Oh. There'd be yeah. sleepers, and then the wood would go back. You know, that doesn't work as well as you'd like to think it does. It does work, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, as long as 
long as long as the slab is well insulated, yeah. four inches under it, and at least two inches on the perimeter, then the heat's got. I agree that it's got to get through the wood, but it's going to come through the wood before it goes down in the well, soil. It'll do that, but it'll take a lot more of it. Um, the the idea is that because this will be used not 24/7, but but hopefully during the day and the evenings, that this we're not going to be raising the temperature and dropping no, it down. Do where, where the upstairs, the upstairs would probably be completely different. Or yeah. we'll have something like, like modings or, or something where we can get fast heat and then it, let it cool down, even after it's insulated, the storm windows are up. What's the and fuel source? Hmm? What, what fuel was envisioned? Propane. Yeah, propane's going down, I heard. Well, it's, it's, still, it's still a petroleum yeah. product. And, and actually, uh, so, uh, so, so we talked about solar. Yeah, we did. Another, another grant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's another old way to yeah. Yeah. heat. Mary? Yeah, yeah I, I have to go, but I was curious about one more thing um, before I go. Um, would the changes, would that mean that voting could happen here again? Or is that not something that's ever going to happen? Because you yeah. mean town meeting? Mm -hmm. Or you mean just, I mean, we do either, have voting. Either or. Yeah, I mean, I, th me. I think, Tell me. you know, it, the future, who knows, but it could, it would be nice if it could have town meeting here. We could have town meeting, you know, use the upstairs and then have, you know, these big screens right. downstairs so you can hold twice the amount of people. So it could be, right. you know. So, so, so I've been keeping track of how many people come to town meeting or how many people vote, and it's usually around 200, unless it's some really controversial issue. Mm -hmm. So... How many chairs will fit up there, John? I got a hundred up there, and they throw the benches in. I, I think you're looking at about 130. I don't know if you're going to get many more people up there. The stage, you've already seen that the stage platforms were pushed forward. There's a partition in this bench. Mm -hmm. and, and what I drew to get that number also had a sort of code compliant widths for egress and such. And uh, when we had town meeting, you wouldn't want to go around a tape measure. So. Yeah. But if we could use both floors, it would make right. it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> One of the things that would happen even before the phase three of the, the upstairs space is we make sure that we had either the conduit or, or stuff in place so that anticipated wiring needs. If we did have a town meeting that used both floors and we used video projection to, so people on one floor knew what the other floor was doing, that we had a way to deal with that wiring wise. Thank you. And uh, excuse me for having yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thanks for coming, Gary. Thank you all for <laughs> other questions? Or does anybody want to talk to John about law or you want to see specific drawings and stuff, feel free to. Yeah, Larry. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say one quick thing. Uh, you've alluded to it already. Um, but I think uh, Scott Bassage uh, deserves all of our thanks because when we talk about the local program or the hyper local program, what we're really talking about is Scott Bassage doggedly and determinedly exploring all of these possibilities and then doggedly and determinedly explaining to all the rest of us why this was a good way to go. So thank you for coming. Please talk this up and get other people to come to the remaining sessions. We're going to East Callis, we're going to Adamant, we're going to make a corner with this same show for, uh, in the next couple weeks. So please talk it up. And yes. we're going to Jamie's garden. Right. This, is, this is the Edible Landscape Garden. It's been planted oh, yeah. out back. And I like to call it Jamie's Garden. <laughs> uh, and we hope that John will put Jamie's Garden on yeah, it'll, here. I've already got it up. Right. Good garden shed. <laughs> Make sure to look up and go upstairs. Yeah, go upstairs. Just be sure to go upstairs. Not done it in paint in 20 minutes. <laughs>